to this week's Let's Talk Aging. My name is Molly Wojnieski of the Upside to Aging, and today I'm speaking with Katherine Harrison and Jacqueline Gwinnett uh, to discuss their new children's book, I Smile for Grandpa. So ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm, I'm so excited for our conversation, and should I say, Katherine, welcome back. We've had you on the show before, um, and I think your project is just so exciting and innovative, and I can't wait to talk about it. Um, so, and before we jump in, I was hoping that maybe you could provide us with a little background information on how you got into the field. Um, Catherine, I'll start with you. Uh, sure. So I got in the field because of a family member that my mother was uh, diagnosed with dementia in 2005 and entered the world of dementia that I didn't know anything about before that. Um, and bef uh, previously, I was in the advertising and communications field. Um, when my son was born and my mom was diagnosed with dementia at the same time, they started going to art classes as a healing process and felt home there and then actually decided to pursue a diploma in fine art and totally switch my life. Yeah, that is yeah. a switch, but how exciting, a new adventure. A new adventure, exactly. And, and that's what lead me here. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And how about you, Jacqueline? Uh, well, I've been a registered social worker for oh, a few years now. <laughs> and so I've been working, I've, I've actually like, I've loved working with seniors for a long time. Um, and I started working on a dementia unit um, I would say close to about 10 years ago. So um, I've been in the social work field for a while and I've also just recently started, uh, well, I gained a designation to be a designated capacity assessor. So I've, I've uh, um, started doing that as well. So yes, it's been, it's been a few years um, sort of on the professional side that I've been working in the field. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, and that's good to know. I hadn't realized that you have a background in in this field. So that's really exciting and encouraging to know um, that you found a new pathway into, yes. yeah. Um, so uh, thank you both for that. Um, now, Catherine, we've had you on before, as I mentioned, and um, during that interview, we briefly discussed your first book, um, which you authored and illustrated for, um, Leave the Nana's Garden. Um, could you just uh, tell us what your inspiration for the book was? I think you kind of mentioned that in your intro, but. Sure. <laughs> it was my mom and my young children uh, and the relationship really with my daughter and my mother uh, because they had a really close bond and they did spend a lot of time in my mom's garden. My mom had a beautiful big garden and um, my daughter loved to go and pick flowers and play in the garden. And uh, it was actually one day uh, in the gar after we were in the garden when we were putting bouquets together, because that was always something my mom always was very adamant about, is you have to pick the flowers and put them in your house if you have them all in the garden. Right. So you can't just leave them in the garden. Everyone has to enjoy them all over the house. Aww. So we would, were doing that, and then my daughter said, why, why is the garden so hard? There's harder, harder to find flowers. It's you know more difficult to to walk around the garden and because at this stage my mom had didn't have as much um, time and wasn't as dedicated at caring for the garden because wow. of the disease progression and so she might was noticeable and that that was the discussion that we had uh, that brought me into talking about the brain disease that my mom had um, and talked about gently about what was going on. And my daughter made the observation that like the weeds in the garden, the mm. disease was taking over Nana's brain. And that was like, yeah, <laughs> for me. And that was the start of the book. Like I wouldn't, I didn't know until that moment that that was what was gonna happen. That's incredible. How insightful of her. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what was, they were so insightful the whole, throughout the whole process. Right. Right. So that was where I was like, okay, we we need to find ways to get these kids and help other kids be a part of this process because it was a, such an insightful, caring, hopeful thing that they brought to the disease. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Oh, that is so – and very rare that you hear such 
I don't know, kindness and, and, and just heart and, and just asking the question of what's going on, you know, the, the innocence in that, but also the, the observation of, of a disease process that is very complicated. (laughs) And, you know, it kind of brings up that they are so observant. So yeah. that's really why, I mean, Jacqueline and I talked about why it's so important to talk to the kids about the disease if it's happening around them, because they are really observant. They know there's something different and uh, you want to make them feel comfortable that what's happening. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> and my daughter, I always thank her. Yeah. <laughs> she's I mean, brilliant. Yes. Um, no, that, that's beautiful. Um, and now you've both released... Um, Catherine, this is your second book, which you've illustrated, and Jacqueline, you're the author of um, I Smile for Grandpa. Um, Can you tell us first how the both of you decided to partner up on this project? Sure. So this, and really it's been a partnership. Uh, Catherine and I, we've been working so hard on this together and bouncing ideas and thoughts and different aspects of the book around and it's been really great working together uh, sharing our ideas um, for for me it was important to find somebody to work on this book that we uh, our goals were very similar we wanted to get the message out uh, we wanted to get information out we wanted it to be in a caring loving way we wanted all of those things and that's what I found in my partnership with Catherine um, so we've been working on this book for a little for a little while now um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's been going really well so we're very 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 excited for it to finally be out there uh for you know for the world to see and for us to be helping people mm-hmm. yeah you just um it just released right uh, i think at the end of may yeah the um, beginning of may but yeah can you tell me where the inspiration for the book came from yeah so for for me you know Working uh, in a secure dementia uh, hospital unit, we get a lot of families with a lot of questions, really great questions about how do we, how do we keep our kids involved? How do we maintain that, you know, those relationships? How do we you know, reassure them when there is no cure? How do we do those sorts of things? And so, you know, it, the, the idea came from we need some sort of a tool to help families, a tool to help parents um, so that they can help the kids. Uh, they can help, you know, kids stay involved with their loved ones even even during um, the different stages of the disease. So that was very important for us. Um, the inspiration came from when I wanted to bring my kids in to the center to volunteer because that's something we enjoy doing. And it was when their questions started to come up too. And I'm, I, you know, I work in the field. I'm a professional in the field. And I had to, I had to really stop and think, okay, how do I explain this to them? How do I deliver it in a way that they'll truly understand um, and appreciate what's happening for a lot of these people. So that's sort of where the inspiration for the book came from. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, I, I think you touched on something really special there. Uh, but I come from skilled nursing as well. And you're right. I, when you have to actually stop and, and talk about it uh, or explain the process, it's... I don't know if you found this, but sometimes it can be a bit mechanical, um, considering we are on a process when we are working um, so closely with individuals. But then to have to explain that to others outside um, Mm -hmm. can be difficult. But then to have to explain it to children. um, Yes. Yeah, that that in itself is a whole new... um, Because I think children are at least in the interactions that I've seen with them, they don't judge first. They're curious first. So, you know, when we go at it and explain, oh, dementia is a list of symptoms and and manifest in these ways and and become a bit jargony and technical, uh, they're not interested in that. No. (laughs) That doesn't uh, work for them. So it's beautiful that you found a way to communicate the process um, in such a relatable way for them. I love that. Um, 
and I think for both of you coming from as a family caregiver, Catherine, and then Jacqueline as a professional caregiver, um, why do you think it's so important for kids to learn about dementia? Um, I, I think we kind of, I kind of talked about it a little bit before, but we talked about how they are insightful. They First of all, they know there's something going on. So if you don't talk to them and they they experience some of the behaviors of dementia that are not what they're used to seeing in an adult, it could seem scary and uncomfortable for them. It can seem scary and uncomfortable for adults. So by being open about it and talking about it, it takes away that fear um, and stops being something that they don't understand and starts being something they're interested in. And they, we, I'm sure, I know Jacqueline has the same experience. They want to help. They are insightful that this is a situation that is unusual. They want to be part of, uh, of helping that situation get better. And so those are the main reasons I think that I, I would like more people to talk about dementia to kids. Yeah, I love that. I love that because, they, and then you're encouraging them to you know, maybe even get into the field later. You know, having such a young um, interaction and experience. Uh, we hear all the time, oh, I had a really great relationship with my grandparents. That's where I, why I got into the field. Um, so to kind of, I don't know, uh, harvest that and, and yeah, I love that. And I think too that, um, you know, because there isn't a cure, um, there's such a feeling of helplessness if you just look at it that way. But if you look at that, you can make a difference to what is happening right now um, and how this experience it, it plays out, then that goes away, that hopelessness, and it becomes more like this is us together connecting and having this time and so you're not focusing on what's happening in the future, you're just focusing on the present and what you can do. Right. And that's, I mean, honestly, that's something that we should all be doing anyway um, when interacting with somebody that's living with mental or Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. Um, no, that's, in, that's incredible. Yeah. And Jacqueline, how about for you? Um, for me, uh, it's a lot of what with Catherine was saying as well. And I think it's, it's about keeping that family bond connection. If it is a family member that, you know, you're, you're trying to connect the kids to you. It's important to talk to them because they, they do know that there is something happening. Something's changing. Um, and I think uncertainty. So fear comes from uncertainty in a lot of cases for kids. And so I think that if, um, you know, they're, they don't have the information. They're more likely to be afraid. If, you know, they're, they're going to visit their loved one and something happens and they haven't sort of had that conversation ahead of time. They might be fearful. They might be reluctant to return. And that's, you know, that's, um, that's sad, really. It's yeah. unfortunate. And that is, you know, that's somebody that's important in their life. And so I think just preparing them, talking with them, keeping that communication open and going um, is really just going to set those visits up for success and uh, allow them to be more engaged and more, um, you know, just together in the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's really, uh, I, I agree with you. I think that's really important. Um, and I, I appreciate that you are taking your own children into the community with you, that you work. Um, yeah. I, I, I am a huge yeah. supporter of that. I, I don't have children myself, but I, I've often said that that is something that I would want to do. Um, and in activities, we try to, when we hold events that are for staff, we always are saying, bring your kids, bring your kids, because it, it's so important to yeah. um, intervene and, and introduce them at younger ages. And it really is the responsibility, I think, a lot of times for the adults <laughs> to do that, right? They have to. Um, yeah, but Absolutely. Yeah. And it's lots of fun, you know, even mm -hmm. at, uh, on, on Halloween, for example, I brought my, my, my little ones in and my middle son, Noah, he was dressed as a, a police officer and we gave him a, a, some sticky notes and he went around writing little tickets for, <laughs> for all of our patients. And, 
and they loved it. It was fun for him and it was fun for them. It was just a, a really cool experience for everybody. Yeah. I have a similar one um, where my son, who's very mechanical, and he would have been probably like maybe five or six when we would go into the long-term care, he was like the wheelchair guy and he loved adjusting everybody's wheelchair. <laughs> and he just like walk around, you need your wheelchair adjusted. And he, he, I don't know if he really knew what he was doing, but <laughs> everyone liked it. Yeah, and, and all, something happens when the oh. two generations meet. It, it, they, I, the residents I'm always, I, not to say that this always happens, but there are some residents, for me that they were residents, um, that you have to be, you're not really sure what's gonna happen. Sure. You know, that, that anything could happen in that moment. And you're kind of put on guard. Um, but there's something that happens when kids and older adults get together that like, time and time again, I've been like this, and the magic happens. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> All this person needed was a, a child the love of a child or attention from a child and um, it, it becomes an amazing intervention that um, I think for professionals we don't often uh, know enough so uh, to hear both of your stories it's, it's a great awareness um, so going back to parents because this is a children's book so the parents obviously are, are playing an important part in um, in providing this resource to their children, uh, what has been the response thus far? I know it's it's really really, but um, from what I've seen, um, social media and online, it this book has received such phenomenal reviews, and everybody's really excited um, to have this resource. Um, and I was wondering if maybe you had some feedback. Yeah, definitely. You know, it is, uh, it hasn't been out for too long, but the families that I've had a chance to, um, to speak to have, have really, uh, really appreciated the honesty of the book, I think. You know, uh, at the end, it leaves a lot of room for discussion. Um, you know, if the child is feeling sad, but yet hopeful that there, there's discussion there, uh, it just... It's a really great way to get the conversation started. And there's also some good information for parents in the book as well. So that's definitely something that parents are, are really uh, finding useful and helpful, for sure. Yeah, that's great. Um, I love that. I, I love because uh, teaching, you're teaching the parents, too, how to have these <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, yeah, and even parents, some parents saying, I, I learned things out of the book as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, from the bits that I, I've read thus far, you have a, a great way of um, norm, normalizing behaviors. So that a, something is happening, uh, a situation is happening, and, and you're able to explain it so eloquently that that doesn't involve the disease itself. That yeah. it's just a new approach. Um, this is how you now approach the situation, and it's it's something that should be taught on all levels. Um, so to see it first here in, in in a children's book is so for me it's beautiful, and I, I think I'm going to actually give it as a resource to others um, as well, um, children's and adults, because mm -hmm. of that reason. Um, it really humanizes the experience. Um, and how about for the kids themselves? Um, are they relating to these situations? Oh, Catherine, you said your daughter, this came from your daughter's experience, at least in, in Weeds and Nana's Garden. But um, are they learning skills? Are they picking up on the, the message? I think that uh, the, the characters um, in the new book, the fact that they're you know, little dogs and uh, that are very lovable. Um, it allows the kids to feel uh, a connection to them without it, with, in a gentle way, in a tender way. And I know that what I've got, the, 
most positive feedback of that is how they love the pictures that they can discover things in them so they enjoy the story and they're also enjoying uh discovering what's happening in the rest of the pictures yeah. so that it can it keeps them wanting to read it again i've had several people say they keep going for that book <laughs> so which is the, the, what we really love that they are enjoying learning about it yeah. and even though it's, it has some sad sadness to it right that's very true i know my kids um and i have uh, you know other children that i've um that i know have read the book and they love the little characters and how uh, you know, you can find little squirrels throughout and it's colorful and bright and inviting and they, they are excited to, to dive right into it. So absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I have to admit that I too was looking at the, oh, look, there's the bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bird in the tree and then there's another squirrel. It is. It's fun. It's interactive. It's, um, it, and it is relatable. I, I like that. Um, the sports you know that sports is involved and, and yeah. you know it's just all around relatable I think for kids um, now uh, I think that my, ne my next question speaks more towards um, what we've affectionately called the sandwich generation so mm -hmm. the primarily women that are, are you know taking care of their kids while they're taking care of um, a parent or a loved one with dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, and it can be a really challenging time. I think, um, Catherine, you and I have discussed this in our, in our last um, interview, just the emotions that go with that. But then the, I don't know, the experience of how, um, how, how relatable it is and, and how um, when you are caregiving on both sides you find patterns and trends that um, that are helpful almost yes um, and I was wondering if you could uh, if you could give a piece of advice to those that are in the silent generation uh, because there are so many and they're expected to be more um, what would it be well wow. <laughs> you know there's there's moments in the chaos yeah. um, where it's pretty intense. It's some pretty intense times. Um, but I think I always feel like it was a gift being sandwiched, actually, despite the intensity of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think w one thing is you're in the mindset of caregiving. <laughs> so you're in the mindset of making somebody something to eat all the time and caring for the other needs. So that helps you because you're kind of, you know, well, you guys are um, professionals, so you're, you're in the zone, I guess is what I'm saying, you're in that zone. So that, I think, was helpful for me. Like, I can't imagine if I didn't have children at the same time, it wouldn't have, it would have been a little bit more distressing possibly for me to be constantly in helping somebody. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, just the, uh, we talked about it. How the play between them is wonderful. Like things we discovered because there was children, and what my mom loved to do, and singing when out loud, and nobody wants to sing in a grocery store, but my mom sings in grocery stores, singing in grocery stores, and my kids are like, hey, let's <laughs> sing in a grocery store, right? Doesn't matter. And those are moments that I wouldn't have had if I didn't have my kids and my mom together. Mm. And there was probably many other those moments um so it seems really hard i'm sure i know it's really hard sometimes but you can have these uh these moments of joy uh that that my kids remember they don't remember that many details about my mom but they remember that they had these beautiful spontaneous energy moments uh, they remember that about her yeah yeah that's that's great that's i think that's so important because the the moments are where right. everything happens, but they're also some of the most fleeting aspects of of care. So and then when there was quiet, um, you know, when mom stopped talking and stopped moving, they could still give her hugs and help her with her hair. And 
so they could still be connecting with her. Um, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a really good point to, to have a relationship throughout the continuum of care, not just when, you know, the initial diagnosis or, or when things are still a bit more um, active, like right. more quiet. Um, and how about for you, Jacqueline, what piece of advice would you give for former caregivers? Um, I think the one piece I'd, I'd give is just to, to go slow. Uh, be patient, take your time, you know, don't try to rush anything. I guess everyone will be on the journey together for it, you know, your loved ones, both the children, you know, and the older adults. So just to go, to be, to go slow, uh, allow time for kids to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And then once you give information for them to have time to process the information, like just take your time with it. Um, I guess is, is, would be my piece of advice. Uh, nothing needs to be rushed. Um, you know, it, the disease is so different for, for everybody uh, that I think that, you know, you'll be discovering new things as you go anyway. So just to take your time with that, with the kids, for sure. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And I think that uh, really reinforces the, the beauty of a, of a book, right? that you always have that resource to go back to. So even if things um, progress, you, you do have something um, to, because it does, it takes a moment, right? You're actually, the intent is to, to take it slow and to read through the book. And so, you know, it's definitely a, a wonderful tool. Um, mm -hmm. But, I can't tell you how much I am so excited for the both of you. I think that the, um, while it's getting great reviews so far, I, I see continued success for both of you in, and I can't wait to share your work with others because I think it's so important. Um, I, I did want to note because on the website, proceed, part of the proceeds from the book are going to the, Alzheimer's Society of Canada, correct? Yes. Yeah, I love that. I think, um, really, you're just doubling the mission. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, our, like, our mission is like helping families. So by giving the book to the world and then by if anything that we have from the book that we can put that into an organization that supports families. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we wanted to continue with that tie. Yeah, I, I love that. And I would be remiss not to ask you both if I know the book just came out, but um, ha, do you see future projects in the, the, uh, down the pike? I mean, this would make a wonderful series. I can see multiple stories coming out of this. Um, I have to ask. <laughs> Well, I, th I, uh, I would love to do different languages, like we did different languages for Weeds and Aaron's Garden. We've done French and German and Portuguese. Wow, um, that's incredible. Jacqueline, you don't know this, but the, my German translator is already going to start in June on translating I Smile for Grandpa into German. Fantastic. <laughs> and you know, it's hard to, it's hard to say like the uh, little buddy who's our, our main little character in the book is, is really stealing hearts. And so we can't say there won't be little more little buddy projects in the future. Right. Oh, well, that's so encouraging. <laughs> so, well, I, I'm, I'm so glad. And I'm really thank you both for taking the time to speak with us today. I, I really wanted to get highlights. Um, your book, I, I love it. I, I, I can't say it enough. And um, thank you both. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. <laughs>